Alright, so we're going to start using one of these every time we stretch, okay? So if you want, you can use that one. They got those. Okay. Tuning to sit silently doing nothing, not even meditation. Just sit silently for no reason, for no purpose. Slowly, slowly, silence grows and becomes an overwhelming experience. And when silence has permeated you through and through, you will know who you are and you will know what this life is all about. And knowing it, one knows godliness. Before death comes, attain something of eternity. Have a taste of something which is timeless, deathless. Then death cannot destroy you. Then you can die dancing, singing, laughing. And to be able to die singing, laughing, dancing is the greatest achievement of life. The glory to the divine is spontaneity. To be spontaneous is to be godliness. Mind is never spontaneous. It's either in the past or in the future, either in that which is no more or in that which is not yet. Between these two, it goes on missing that which is, and that is the door. The present moment is not part of time, hence the present moment is not available to the mind. Mind and time are synonymous. You can say that mind is time inside your being and time is mind outside you, but they are one phenomenon. The present moment is neither part of the time nor part of the mind. When you are in the present moment, you are in godliness. That is the true meaning of meditation. The true meaning of prayer. The true meaning of love. And when one acts out of the present moment, that action is never binding. This is not your action. It is godliness acting through you. It is godliness flowing through you. The 
Drop all boundaries, become infinite. Think only in terms of infinity, eternity. Less than that has never satisfied anybody and is not going to satisfy anybody, ever. The boundary of the body has to be dropped. We are too identified with our bodies. We think that we are the body and we are not. This is the first falsehood that has to be dropped. Out of this falsehood, many other falsehoods arise. It is one, if one is identified with the body, one will be afraid of old age, disease, death. They grow out of this identification with the body. Think of yourself as pure consciousness. You are not the body, you are the one who is aware of the body, and you are not the mind either. First start working with the body because it is easy to start with the gross. Then move to the subtle. Look at the mind as separate from yourself, as you become aware that you are neither the body nor the mind, you will feel great freedom arising in you, unhindered. There will be no obstruction, no walls, but in all directions open space. Then the most subtle barrier has to be dropped. That of feeling. That is the subtlest. First body, then mind, then heart. And to be free from the heart is to be enlightened. We are all strangers here. This is not our home. Our home is somewhere else. We are in a foreign land. To remain outside oneself is to remain homeless. To come and it is to be back home. Now every effort has to be made to come in. No stone is to be left unturned. Everything has to be risked because nothing is more precious than this turning in. Everything can be lost for it, sacrificed for it, because all else is true. person lives egolessly. He knows I am part of the whole, an intrinsic part of the whole. Not at all separate. To know that you are not separate from the whole brings tremendous freedom. It brings vastness. The whole sky is yours. You are no longer identified with the small, very small ego. We are vast, but we have become confined in small spaces. That's why there is so much misery. It is like forcing an ocean into a dewdrop. We are birds with wings that need to have the whole sky but are encaged. Nobody is encaging us, but the irony is we go on encaging ourselves. We are the prison, and we are the prisoner, and we are just are the jailer. There's nobody else. That's why the mystics call it a dream. It is a dream. The moment you wake up, you find, this is strange. I was chased by a lion, but I was the lion, and I was chased. And I was a spectator, too, the witness to the whole thing. This is how life is, like a dream. Now it is time. If children play with stupid games, they can be forgiven. They need to go astray. They need to commit many mistakes. But as you grow older, you cannot be forgiven. And the ego is the most stupid game because it is against reality. It is against existence. Sanya simply means becoming aware of the fact that the ego is a false entity. Our own creation, our own projection, that we are caught in it. It is like a spider's web. The spider creates the web from the inside of itself. We go on creating our own prisons out of our imagination, our desire, our memory, our ambition, our jealousy. And they go, all go on spinning subtle structures around us. The whole structure is called the ego. The whole work of the mind is called the ego. From this very moment, become aware of it and slowly, slowly, get out of it. There's a bit of Sigmund Freud. We hear the ego and the superego. You gotta watch out for some kinds of places. It gives you the sense that you're above others. It's basically, the president, presidential administration got in office now. Hopefully, they'll come to their grips. Ego is our hell, and the irony is that we are the creators of it. We create it and we suffer, but it's within our capacity not to create it and to move away from suffering. The moment the ego is not there and the suffering is not there, you are in bliss. Bliss is our nature. Suffering is a created phenomenon, arbitrary. Bliss is uncreated. It is there right now, underneath suffering like an undercurrent. You need not create it. It is already the case. Just don't create suffering. 
Ego consists of feeling and thinking that we are separate from existence, that we are like islands. That is absolutely false. We don't exist in separation. We can't exist even for a single moment in separation. The breath that comes in keeps us joined with the outside. And we are not only breathing with the nose, we are breathing through every pore of the body. We are thirsty, we drink water, and the water quenches that thirst. It is continuously moving from the outer toward the inner, and from the inner toward the outer. Food is continuously in circulation, breath is in circulation. We are in constant exchange of reality. We are not separate, we are bridged in a thousand and one ways. Start this roller. There's a roller and the, um, there's a rack over there. You can get ground one. So start from this on the bottom. Roll it sure. back. Yeah, you take it off again. And then roll it to your neck. Roll it up. Roll it back to your lower back. <laughs> if the neck is too long, that bind you want. You can kind of stop at the areas that feel more tender. Also sit up on it too, like this too. Sit on the upper back and the neck. Focus on the big back between the um, upper and lower back. Focus on the lower back.
switching these. Alright, so you're going to have, uh, kind of put it in your lower back, like this, and then you have your knee up, bring it to the side, keep your left shoulder contact to the ground, try to bring that knee, to try to get the knee to touch the ground. Wow. Right hand ah. on the knee. I'm sure you got the right hand off the ground. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, jeez. I had no idea it was that tight right there. Switch sides. Oh, they gonna make us all liberal up in here. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna be like work. <laughs> next viral video, you start doing jumping spin kicks. <laughs> oh. oh no! Go oh, no. 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 Please don't grab my foot. <laughs> Grandma fucking made it and I said <laughs> Switch legs.
All right, Bolo, I got something you can make fun of me for. <laughs> I just put my, you know, we were just stretching. Uh -huh. So I put my forehead to my knee, forgetting I had woodlock on my knee. That felt great. My eyes were like tearing. <laughs> I just did it for one day and it made a big difference. It released a lot of tension. This is part of the body we never get to um, relax it. So you'll start feeling a lot when you get to the IT band they call it on the side of your thigh. You'll start hurting. But just let it uh let it sit in. Get through that and we'll do all this stuff. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is an optical course. <laughs> what are you trying to do with those things? They have us all bandaged up. <laughs> I think of Bolo 
ever become student of the year. <laughs> That's going to be the phrase underneath his uh, plaque. What are you trying to do? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was all bad and stuff. <laughs> Okay. Uh. 